How are you doing today? My name is Mark Ferrioli. I'm a student at the North Bennett Street School. Um, I'm here today doing a demonstration at the New England Home Show um, on turning pens. Basically, uh, for a pen of this size, which is, a, which is your standard quick pen, uh, straight barrels, uh, two different barrels. You can start with any small piece of wood that starts with just a block, just like this. Um, take, your, take your pen tube, you measure out what size it is. This happens to be an 8mm pen tube. Uh, drill it out on the drill press using a centering vise. Uh, I should have an example here, but I don't. Uh, basically, it has two, two V cuts down the centering vise. You place your corners in there, and that holds it vertical to the drill press. So you ensure that you have a hole that goes straight through both sides, and that way it's not going through at any certain angle. Uh, basically, once you get your hole drilled, as through here, you have your pen tube, which now needs to be glued inside of here. The next step is to take a piece of sandpaper roll it around the tube a little bit and just rough it up. Uh, as you can see the brass is pretty shiny now that doesn't make for a great glue surface but after you rough it up you can see the scratch marks now the glue is going to adhere not only to your pen tube but now to the wood ensuring that it stays nice and glued in uh, when you have it mounted on the lathe. Uh, I use here uh, super glue it's basically just a CA glue um, mine is gap filling so if you have any inconsistencies in your holes like any gaps in here the glue will take care of it and you won't have to worry about it. Once you get the glue on there, I use just a dowel. I filed it down on the ends. So now that the dowel is, you can use this as an inserting tool. You spread some glue on there. I usually like to go in about three quarters of the way, move it around. If you want, you can take it back out, put some more glue on it, flip the, flip the blank around, and then insert it all the way through and in. Take it out and it's good to go. You'll have some excess glue dribbling out on the sides. I usually just take a quick paper towel, mop it up. The next step now, you need to make sure that the end of your wood is now parallel, I mean uh, perpendicular to your barrel and square. Uh, this is going to ensure good, good joint surface between your pen mechanism and your wood. You don't want any gaps in there because then it just doesn't look like a good pen. Uh, so the tool we use for this is the barrel trimmer. The barrel trimmer is the right size for the brass tube. This is going to clean out any glue that might get stuck on the inside of your tube. So insert it back into your, uh, your pen vise, which has the vertical V cuts. Put this on your drill press. Make sure it's all lined up. And you just kind of kind of go in slowly, just going down. You don't need too much pressure until you start to see little curls of, uh, of, bra of the brass tube. And you'll tell because it's shiny on the end. And you don't want to take off too much because this, this length is going to ensure, you know, it's going to go good along. Good size for the pen. Good size for the pen. You know? uh, so this is what it looks like when it's not trimmed. And this is what it looks like when it's trimmed. And you can see yeah. if both ends trimmed, you're now ready to mount it on the lathe. So I've already mounted one over here, and I've been turning it for a little while now. I can take it off real quick just to show you. So this is a pen mandrel. It goes right into your Morse taper number two. You just kind of slide it right in. You don't need a headstock or anything. You do need a live center. Um, So this here is already a pen that's been turned a little bit, uh, not finished yet obviously. You can see that it's trimmed off, so now it's going to make a nice flush joint with the pen mechanism. Uh, you have your pen bushings. Your pen bushing is now is the same size as your pen mechanism. So this is what you turn your pen down to. Uh, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't know how big the pen is, and the, the bushings wouldn't line up, and you These wouldn't... These are size match parts, 8 millimeter. Absolutely. Seven, okay. Yep. These, these parts match the, uh, match the mechanisms of the pen. So this diameter right here is the same diameter of the center band. So that way when you turn the wood down to the bushing, you'll have a nice even surface all the way across. If you, with that being said, you put the bushing on first. Uh, I like to put a spacer in between the, uh, the end of the mandrel uh, and your bushing. That way when you're turning it, you just have room. Your tools are away from anything metal and everything. You know, it's, it's the last thing you need is to catch a metal edge on your tool and just ruin it. All these come in a kit. Uh, when you order them online, uh, you can actually order them all at once, or you can order kits separately. You can order bushings separately, parts. It's kind of neat. Uh, there's a, there's a, just type it in on Google.com, pen making, and uh, there's a spalted uh, box elder right here. I got this off got this off of eBay. You go on eBay, type in pen blanks, and every time it's 500 pages or more that come up of pen blanks, people selling them. And they're cheap, real cheap. Uh, and they make beautiful pens, even something like this. This is what I'm turning today. It's just a piece of curly maple. You can see the curl on it. it looks pretty sweet.
This is um, tulip wood. The grain on this is unbelievable. The pink, I think it's one of my favorites. Right. So basically you mount it up. Um, when you first turn it, you're going to have a square blank. Um, you just turn like any other turning. Start off kind of slow, but once you get to round, you can just really start going at it. So just a little bit. And the natural motion of this spinning is going to automatically tighten this. If this is too, too loose, it's going to tighten it on its own. So just give it a quick snug, and that's it. Um, and that's all you need. And then you just tighten it. Now the same, it's the same process with this. When you put the, the tailstock in, rest it in, tighten it up, and I'm talking about just a little bit of a snug, and you're good. Tighten this up. I like to line my tool rest just below the center of the turning, um, and that brings my that brings my tool up to about the center. And what you want to be doing is cutting on the bevel. You don't want to come in straight because that turns into a scraper and doesn't give you a good cut. Sometimes you can just rest the tool on there and bring it down until it starts cutting and then just back and forth. And you can kind of take a lot of material off until you start getting close. And then when you start getting close, you can kind of come in real slow, work it back and forth. While it's running, you can feel it. And when you get, when you think you get, um, this isn't a requirement, but I do wear some pretty goofy glasses here, so uh, just, just give you a forewarned. <laughs> So, all right, let's get, let's go after it. Uh, you can turn this at a pretty high speed, um, up in the up in the thousands, so especially when it starts getting round. And when you go to finish it, you want to have it at the almost highest speed you can go. Um, that'll give you a good uh, shine to it. So anyway, get this started. They are just a guide. Uh, they're pretty soft. I've done it before. It's not necessarily going to ruin your tool. Um, changes it changes the diameter though, so you don't want to, you really do want to stay away from it. Um, you can always buy new ones, but you don't want to buy new ones every single pen. The thing about the, um, the CA glue, uh, it seeps into the wood a little bit, and I'll show you when we're done turning this. The thickness of this wood on the outside of that brass tube is maybe a 30 second. Maybe a 30 second. So now I'm getting pretty close to the bushing, and you can see that it's a little uneven, you know, so now I'm just going to kind of go back and forth real lightly taking off any high spots, getting down to those bushings, trying to get this as flat as possible. In my opinion, a straight barreled pen like I'm doing right now is harder to do than something that's curved. Because when it's curved, you're just moving, you can move it and you can roll it and you can make it your own curve. This is, you gotta get it straight across. It's harder to get something straight and flat um, than it is to make something curved. I like to sneak up on the bushing. Uh, you can feel it. It's almost right there. This one's got a little more on it, so I'm going to kind of just keep taking it down. If you really wanted to test the flatness and how straight this is, you can even put a straight edge on there. A little four inch uh, Starrett ruler with a straight edge. But the real time saver is the roughing out. The faster you can get it to this point and start doing your fine work, you know, you can just go back and forth, rough it out until you get to here. This is what takes a little bit more time. Because you want to, about, about screwing up uh, the pen process. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is when gluing the brass tube in, super glue, even without an accelerator, dries pretty quickly. When you're putting this in, you don't, I mean, you have a little bit of time, but you don't want to dilly-dally with this because I've had a lot of them just go, they get stuck. So here's the easy part and almost the fun part of turning. It's low risk. Uh, you still can go further than the bushing, which you don't want to do with sandpaper, but it takes a lot of, it takes not as much off as a turning tool would. Um, and you can see some of the dust coming off on this. Uh, that one, I would probably start with a 180 uh, and then work your way up to sanding pads, micro mesh pads that go, that go up into the thousands. Um, my last one will probably be around like a 12,000 to 2,000 grit. Um, and that's what you need to give your pen a polish. It actually almost polishes uh, its own without any finish. When you have a pen, um, once, once you're done with 220, that's good enough with sandpaper. Then you can jump to your pads and uh, I believe these are about these start at like 600 and they go all the way up to 12,000 grit.